Hey everyone, welcome to the Trumbo fam. I am so super, super excited to be getting started on our Blessed in the Mess playlist section on our channel. It's going to be all about those, just what it says, Blessed in the Mess topics. The general family life, being a mama, being a wife, husbands, kids in the home, and all the blessed messes that come with having a family. I can't wait to just keep rolling out videos and just get it out there. Um, not so much venting, but just talking about it, um, encouraging others, um, and while I encourage others and as I talk, um, just encouraging myself also to keep going, uh, keep at it, and get through um, all those messes and feel blessed through the mess. Because behind every closed door, you will find imperfections guaranteed. No family is perfect, no wife is perfect, no mama is perfect, uh, no husband is perfect, no kids are perfect. We all struggle with one thing or another. And my first video that I'm putting up is on the topic of the stay-at-home mom burnout. I wanted to be a mom since I was really little. I just loved my baby dolls. I loved anyone who had a baby. I was always around the babies. I always wanted to hold the babies. I always wanted to babysit the babies. And when I was able to start my own family, um, and now I have five children, I feel truly blessed. I have been a stay-at-home mom for around 14 years now. Um, when I found out I was pregnant with our first child, Chase, who is now 14, I worked all the way up until I was going to have him. But Dave and I both agreed that I would be a stay-at-home mom. And yeah, so over 14 years now, I've been a stay-at-home mom. And there have been some real challenges and some real joys. And as much as I was so excited to be able to stay home with my babies and um, just be with them every day, and it was I was super blessed to be able to do that. And I went into it like a real mother, and I heard about other moms talking about, oh my goodness, you're gonna get burned out so quick, um, this, that, and the other. And I was like, no, that's not gonna happen to me because I got this. I can do this. It's going to be awesome. Well, I wasn't all the way prepared because mom burnout did come. Okay, so at first this might sound like a rant, but just wait till I tell you how I change my thought pattern to get out of that dredge of feeling that mom burnout. I'm talking in the heart of motherhood, toddler here, baby there, Anything can go wrong and my house is a mess. No real conversations are going on in the home because no one is on your brain function. And you're home every day not talking to anyone because you're busy at home taking care of your brood. I think it's so easy to go into motherhood and like I did and, and like, you got this, it's not gonna happen to me, I'm not gonna get burned out, um, but Oh my goodness, you get slapped in the face and you do. And I think it's really easy that moms get burnt out because it's not a job where you're always motivated to get up out of bed, get dressed, make yourself feel good, presentable, give yourself some time, and then get a schedule that someone made for you and you know what you're supposed to be doing in the day that schedule that a boss gave you and um, that's what you're doing. It's or it's an organized thing for you. And then in the end of that job, you get a reward, a paycheck, and maybe a pat on the back telling you, you did a good job this week. 
It's hard to keep a schedule and super exhausting if you do. You always have so much work to do in the day, but go in circles because toddlers here, babies there. You can never come up with a game plan. You might as well forget it because if you do, the game plan will be shattered, okay, shattered. Even though my babies staying at home with them have brought me so much joy and so much laughter, I did find myself becoming the burnt out mom. Because of all we talked about, my rants, and you're living like this daily, it's exhausting you start to begin to just dwell on that reward in the end. Like, where's my reward for all this work? Nobody's even seeing anything that I'm doing. You find yourself washing those windows in your home and then you begin to look around and develop feelings of no purpose in life because nobody cares that you're washing the windows and you're not seeing the silver lining on the other side. You're tired. And then you're tired of coming up with ways to use your imagination to keep the kids occupied. Just day after day of being in this mess, of feeling like there's no schedule, no efficientness of getting things done, exhausted mentally to keep the kids occupied. And when you do accomplish something, there's always something else going wrong that's worse than what you just accomplished. You get lost in everyone else's needs and lose yourself. And it's easy to do because your kids are too small to come up to you and tell you, hey mom, you've been working really hard. You've done a lot for me. Why don't you go just take a break? Go take a hot bath, go refresh. No, they are needy, messy, and suck all the energy out of you. My thought process was all wrong. I wanted to be a perfectionist, accomplishing everything, and be efficient with getting everything done along with taking care of my babies. I wanted that pat on the back, a reward, after a while when I would accomplish something. I looked outside the important job right in front of me thinking that I needed to be doing something else. I need to accomplish something bigger than what I'm doing. And the worst thing that I could have done is look at other moms and begin to measure myself up. Thinking I was a failure because I wasn't accomplishing all that they were all while being a mom myself. With all this said, my mind was starting to keep me from being great in the important mission that was given to me. Instead of waking up joyful and ready to seize the day, I woke up fatigued, no joy. Anything that went wrong was 10 times worse, even the little things. Getting on the floor and playing with my kids, giving them my attention, was becoming not because I was joyfully wanting to, but an obligation. All the while, I was clueless as to why I was in burnout mode, which caused even more frustration. I was always told to step out of the scene, have date nights with your husband, hang out with your friends, make time for yourself. But I never focused on that and that was not the case for me. I began to look to my spouse to give me that encouragement, everything I needed and that pat on the back. And if he didn't, there's going to be problems.
So this just could be a pattern that goes on and on and on. How do I get out of this mode? And why am I in this mode? And guilt sets in. It's just a pattern of disaster. So it just rolls into it. And you just, if you keep the thought process that I was talking about, all the things, um, wanting that reward, um, not seeing the silver lining, not taking pride in my a house and, and, and the job that I was doing, thinking it was just all for nothing. Are you kidding me? What? I had to learn so much. So as I began to change my thought process, things began to change at home. Um, I became joyful again. I became happy. I felt like I had a purpose. I mean, I don't understand how us moms could think that raising children isn't the best of the best. And, and, and a true purpose. I mean, why do we get ourselves so stuck in the day-to-day -day stress that that starts hindering our brain, that this is just for nothing, and oh, I clean the house, nobody cares, and what? You know what, You, we are doing something amazing. And it's, I don't know why we get in burnout mode, but we do, and that's why we're talking about it today, and we're trying to encourage each other. So let me talk about that mind change. When I started thinking about myself, that was like the first step because it was the first step to recognize that I, need, I do need to step out of the scene for a little bit. Um, I need to find some good friends. I had friends, but friends that can relate and that we can talk about things and friends that aren't measuring each other up, not toxic friends where you're getting around them and um, you're measuring each other's motherhood up and who's better, who, yeah, stay away from that. You want to find friends that genuinely, you know, talk about what's going on in their home. They're open about it because nobody's perfect, okay? So if you're you if you have a friend and all they say is, "Well, that doesn't go wrong in my home." Well, we don't do that. No. Get away from that person because they're lying. It's they have problems too. There's something in their home that's not right because no one's perfect. So find friends that you can talk to and share the ups and downs with and it just all feels relatable to each other. So the first step was recognizing that, hey, maybe I should be listening to um, people when they tell you, get out, go get a pedicure, take time for yourself, set that time aside. You do not need to be Wonder Woman and be by the kid's side every second of the day. So I had to learn that. I, I started stepping out of the scene, taking time for myself. I found a great group of women um, that we that that started sharing um, the good and the bad. That positive factor is sometimes hard for some people. Um, it might be hard for you because you are living with someone who is super negative and just never will give you that encouragement. A mother-in-law, um, a friend that you just can't get away from. I get that. Um, it's that's that's a tough situation, but you have got to realize who you are and the importance of who you are. After finding um, a really good group of friends and sharing the struggles with each other, um, it was like God helped us all come together and start a women's Bible study that was just geared around these issues, um, taking uh, things from the Bible on uh, encouragement on how God um, would want us to be uh, feeling in these certain different situations, different struggles that we go through as moms um, with our children, husbands. Um, just getting in the positive atmosphere of uh, a really good Bible study um, 
it I feel that God really started working on my heart and changing my mind, changing my thought process because it was all wrong. It was so wrong. It's truly a game changer. It's what helped me because I feel like I was really just, I would get depressed because here I was, I was supposed to be, you know, Wonder Woman of a mother, and I found myself in burnout mode, and I began to have guilt, which turned into just being depressed, and it's just not fun, and you just can't live in that daily. And every time I would be like, no, this is what's going to make it better. I got to go do something outside of this home. I got to be something better than what I am. I got to go uh, get a job. Like, why can't I work and take care of kids and this, that, and the other? But you know what? It just, it's not for everyone. Truly, I feel that God has told me that he wants me right where I'm at. And this is right where I'm supposed to be and to just keep doing the good job that I was already doing. I feel God just really working on me, telling me that you are working for me. You're not working for anyone else. It's not to be better than someone. It's not um, for your husband to give you that pat on your back. I see what you're doing and you're working hard for me. No matter how much you're begging for that attention from the mortal, like your husband or your friends, your mom, uh, mother-in-law who's just been giving you a hard time, You are never going to feel as good as the feeling that you get when you truly change your mind into the thinking that you are working for the Lord and no one else. No one else. And you are doing the best job that you can do in your season, in your setting. And no one else matters.
Set goals and daily routines, knowing that this day is laundry day, another day is cleaning the toilets day, and another day paying the bills day. Strive for a schedule every day and make sure every day on that schedule you make it a point to have some type of quality time with the kids. It does help to keep things orderly and have a schedule, but remember not to get stressed if that schedule is not always kept. Because remember, like we said earlier, you never know what the day can bring being home with your kids every day. Don't be moody or stressed if everything doesn't go as planned. Brace yourself and know that things might change. Keep up the good work, mamas. Be still and know that he is God. This season that you're in is the greatest mission given with purpose. See the silver lining. The reward will come, mamas. Hang in there and God bless.